Namaste. Welcome to this session on Chakra Explorations. In this session, we'll hear about the Sahasra Chakra or the Crown Chakra. The Sanskrit word Sahasra means 1000. Although Sahasra is represented by a lotus with 1000 petals, the 1000 literally implies that its magnitude and significance is vast. In fact, unlimited. The sahasra is shunya, the void. It is difficult to discuss sahasra, for it transcends concepts and words and is beyond experience. For the experience, the experienced and the experiencer are one and the same. Sahasra is the merging of consciousness and prana. It is the culmination of yoga. It is yoga itself, the perfect union. When one gains mastery over sahasra, he or she becomes free of all states, becomes rooted in happiness and free from grief and bondage. With the blossoming of Sahasra, the yogi is said to acquire various psychic powers. But if he or she can free themselves from attachment to such powers, then they may become the knower of the Supreme and acquire every kind of knowledge. The Sahasra is not a chakra as is often thought. Chakras are within the realm of the human psyche. Consciousness manifests at different levels according to the chakra that is predominantly active. Sahasra acts through nothing, and yet again it acts through everything. Sahasra is beyond the beyond, Bharat Bharam, and yet it is right here. Sahasra is the culmination of the progressive ascension through the different chakras. It is the crown of expanded awareness. The power of the chakras does not reside in the chakras themselves, but in Sahasra. The chakras are only switches. All the potential lies in Sahasra. The literal meaning of the word Sahasra is 1,000. For this reason, it is said to be a lotus with 1,000 petals. However, while literally meaning 1,000, the word Sahasra implies that its magnitude and significance is vast, in fact, unlimited. Therefore, Sahasra should more aptly be described as a lotus with an infinite number of petals usually said to be red or multi-rainbow coloured. Sahasra is both formless, nirakar, and with form, akar. Yet it is also beyond, and therefore untouched by form, nirvikara. It is shunya, or in actual fact the void, of totality. It is Brahman. It is everything and nothing. Whatever we say about Sahasra will immediately limit and categorize it, even if we say it is infinite. It transcends logic, for logic compares one thing to another. Sahasra is totality. So what is there to compare with? It transcends all concepts, and yet it is the source of all concepts. It is the merging of consciousness and prana. Sahasra is the culmination of yoga, the perfect merging. Total Union and the Unfolding of Enlightenment When Kundalini Shakti reaches Sahasra, that is known as the union between Shiva and Shakti. 
as Sahasra is said to be the abode of higher consciousness or Shiva. Union between Shiva and Shakti marks the beginning of a great experience. When this union takes place, the moment of self-realization or samadhi begins. At this point, the individual dies. I do not mean that physical death occurs. It is a death of the mundane awareness or individual awareness. It is death of the experience of name and form. At this time, you do not remember the I, the you, or the they. The experience, the experienced, and the experiencer become one and the same. The seer, seeing, and seen are merged as a unified whole. In other words, there is no multiple or dual awareness remaining. There is only single awareness, the feeling of oneness. When Shiva and Shakti unite, nothing remains. There is absolute silence. Shakti does not remain Shakti, and Shiva is no more Shiva. Both are mingled into one, and they can no longer be identified as two different forces. Every mystical and religious system of the world has its own way of describing this experience. Some have called it nirvana, others samadhi, kaivalya, self-realization, enlightenment, communion, heaven, and so on. If you read the religious and mystical poems and scriptures of the many cultures and traditions, you'll find ample descriptions of Sahasra. However, you have to read them with a different state of consciousness to understand the esoteric symbology and terminology. Raja Yoga, Kundalini and Samadhi In the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, you'll not come across the word Kundalini, as this text does not directly deal with Kundalini Yoga. However, not every saint, rishi or teacher has referred to Kundalini by this name. Kundalini is the subject matter of Tantra. When Patanjali wrote the Yoga Sutras 2,600 years ago, it was during the period of Buddha and about four centuries before the great era of philosophers. At that time, Tantra had a very bad reputation in India because the gifts of Kundalini, the Siddhis, were being misused for petty purposes and people were being exploited. Therefore, Tantra and Tantric terminology had to be suppressed. And in order to keep the knowledge alive, an entirely different language had to be adopted. In the Raja Yoga of Patanjali, emphasis is placed on the development of a state called Samadhi. Samadhi actually means supermental awareness. First comes sensual awareness, then mental awareness, and above that is supermental awareness, the awareness of your own self, the higher self. The awareness of forms, sound, touch, taste and smell is the awareness of the senses. The awareness of time, space and object is mental awareness. Supermental awareness is not a point, it is a process, a range of experience. Just as the term childhood refers to a wide span of time, in the same way, samadhi is not a particular point of experience, but a sequence of experiences which graduate from one stage to another. Therefore, Patanjali classifies samadhi into three main categories. The first is known as savikalpa samadhi, that is, samadhi with fluctuation, and it has four stages. Vitarka, Vichara, Ananda and Asmita. The second category, Asampragnata, 
is samadhi without awareness. And the third category, nirvikalpa, is samadhi without any fluctuation. These names only indicate the particular state that your mind is in during the samadhi experience. After all, the erosion or dissolution in mental awareness does not take place suddenly. The normal mental awareness does not come to an abrupt end. There is a development of one type of awareness and an erosion or dissolution of another. The normal consciousness fades and the higher awareness develops and takes its place. Therefore, there is a parallel interaction between the two states. Where does meditation end and where does samadhi begin? You cannot pinpoint it because there is an interspersion. Where does youth end and old age begin? The same answer applies and the same process happens in samadhi as well. Where does savikalpa samadhi end and where does asampragnata begin? The whole process occurs in continuity, each stage fusing into the next and transforming in a very graduated way. This seems logical when you consider that it is the same consciousness which is undergoing the experience. So the consciousness evolves from itself, unfolds from itself, level to level. In Tantra, it is said that when Kundalini is ascending through the various chakras, the experiences one has may not be transcendental or divine at all in themselves, but they are indicative of the evolving nature of consciousness. This is the territory of Savikalpa Samadhi, sometimes illumined and sometimes dark and treacherous. From Muladhar up to Agni Chakra, the awareness is experiencing higher things, but it is not free from ego. You cannot transcend ego at the low points of awakening. It is only when Kundalini reaches the Agni Chakra that the transcendence begins. This is where the ego is exploded into a million fragments and the ensuing death experience occurs. At this point, Savikalpa ends and Nirvikalpa begins. From here, the energies fuse and flow together up to Sahasra, where enlightenment unfolds. In Tantra, Sahasra is the highest point of awareness, and in Patanjali's yoga, the highest point of awareness is Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Now, if you compare the descriptions of Sahasra and Nirvikalpa Samadhi, you'll find that they are the same. And if you compare the experience of Samadhi described in Raja Yoga with the descriptions of Kundalini awakening, you'll find that they are also the same. It should also be noted that both systems talk about the same types of practices. Raja Yoga is more intellectual in its method of expression and is more in tune with philosophy. And Tantra is more emotional in approach and expression. That is the only difference between the two paths. And if you can understand the teachings of Lord Buddha and the other great saints and spiritual teachers, you'll find that they have also spoken about the same subject but in different languages. Though the word Sahasra literally means a thousand, it really implies the infinite, the fountainhead, reality, the absolute, or consciousness. Mystically, the Sahasra is beyond time, space, and all objects, and yet it is the source of them. Consciousness is the reality, that existed before the creation came forth, or in scientific terms, that which existed before the Big Bang. And it is that which will exist externally beyond endless time in the future. It is the ever-present stage on which the drama of time plays out. This reality 
is summed up in the following statement by the Chinese mystic Chao Chu. Even before the world was, reality is. The Sahasra transcends all the chakras and includes them all within itself. It can be realized in Samadhi, the absorption into consciousness, the mystical state which takes place when the ego personality temporarily evaporates. It may also arise when one is washing the dishes or sitting on the toilet. One identifies not with the limited personality, but with consciousness, the universal spirit. In the Western mystical traditions, the Sahasra is called the crown, since it is symbolically located at the crown of the head and because it is the culmination and consummation of our evolutionary journey. We realize what we have always been as consciousness and that our trip to planet Earth was a grand illusory drama, sometimes pleasant, sometimes painful. All our problems and anxieties were and are just bubbles in eternity. We realize that there was not, is not, and never will be a path to realize consciousness. We are ever consciousness. Ultimately, there is no need to realize anything. I am and everything is. However, from the perspective of our life and our identification with our individual self, we aspire to realize what we already are. So we practice yoga and awakening the chakras, as we're doing now. Now that you've listened to so much inspiring information about the Sahasra Chakra and Samadhi, just sit quietly and comfortably for a few moments contemplating on what all this means to you. Let your mind roll through the questions and the answers, the understanding and the experiences. And each time your mind gets distracted by thoughts of something else, realize what's happened. It's okay, it's normal. Just keep bringing it back. Always realize it's gone and keep bringing it back. Continue contemplating on what all this means to you. Namaste. Namaste.